Thank you. Um, so w when I was little, uh, I loved uh, watching animated series. Um, and one of them that I remember fondly is called uh, Papa Beaver, Papa Beaver's Story Time. And I don't expect a lot of you to know this uh, animated series because it's French. Um, and uh, it's been translated in English, but uh, it's mainly a, a French series. And in this series, so the, the Papa Beaver, uh, the Dad Beaver, to, uh, tells stories to his uh, children. And uh, with each story, there is something about the real life uh, that the, the children can grasp, and then that we, as the spectators, uh, we can remember as well. And in fact, storytelling has been studied by neurologists and biologists for the last couple of decades. Um, and uh, what they say is that, uh, it's a, a sentence uh, I've heard a lot, humans are hardwired for, hardwired for stories. And in fact, we communicate a lot with stories. We uh, learn a lot with stories and we uh, remember things a lot uh, with stories. And in fact, it may have been uh, an evolutionary advantage because uh, as soon as humans were able to communicate, um, one way they used to uh, propagate the, the things that, that happened uh, and the, the risks, the threats um, that they could pass on to new generations was to gather around the campfire and tell those stories. And uh, here it's the case as well because uh, on the last uh, few days you may have heard stories uh, too. Uh, so it's just a couple examples, but uh, uh, Eden, uh, to, to make us understand how uh, she practiced uh, threat modeling, uh, told the stories about uh, uh, how you are a, a product manager in a new uh, startup, uh, in a fintech startup, and uh, to, to help us uh, uh, remember that we have to go back to the, the, the basics. Uh, Alice uh, uh, told the story about a, a Portuguese hacker that used uh, old techniques to infiltrate a network. So before I dive into the, the five uh, application security stories, uh, a bit of, about myself. So I've been a web developer for many years. And uh, as a web developer, I've always, even more, even, if, uh, even before I've started uh, being uh, a web developer, I've always been passionate about uh, AppSec and I speak about it a lot. Uh, so that's mainly because of all of the OWASP resources that I've used. So I'm happy to be here today to, to give back a, a little. Um, and uh, I've told so much about uh, security uh, to everyone in my company that I've finally uh, become CISO. Uh, and so to, to uh, so at Teodo, we are building uh, web applications to help our, our clients uh, solve their business problems. And uh, as a CISO, I want uh, these products, these applications to be secure. And uh, one way I've found uh, to help developers achieve that is to tell them stories. So, I'm kind of a Papa Beaver <laughs> in my company, uh, or at least that's uh, what I'm aiming to be um, by telling stories uh, uh, whenever I can. And so what I first uh, found out is for some developers, uh, security is boring, or not boring is not quite the word, but uh, it can be uh, a blocker. It will, it's, it's something that will prevent them to uh, release products fast. Um, and in fact, security is quite fun. And uh, so I, I like telling them stories about uh, uh, fun vulnerabilities uh, to help them understand that it's um, understanding security is a, a way of becoming a better developer. And one way of uh, understanding, understanding that is to grasp that uh, security is about finding flaws in uh, things that you built, and you don't even have to be technical uh, to understand that. And so I will take an example. So I don't know if it works outside of France, but I know uh, it works in France. So um, you, you know the, the, uh, the La Poste, the post office. Uh, it's uh, the, the service you can use to send letters. And uh, when you want to send a letter, you pay for stamps, you add a stamp on the envelope, and uh, you send the letter, and so that's how you pay for the service. But there are two features in uh, this service 
that you can combine to uh, avoid pain. So the first feature is you are able to send letters uh, without pain. Uh, but of course, someone has to pay. So if you don't uh, stick a stamp on the envelope, the person to who you send the letter will have to pay in your place to get the letter. So the the, uh, the post uh, the postman will uh, bring the letter to them, and if they want to get the letter, they have to pay uh, what uh, you would have paid with the, the, the stamp. Another feature is uh, you are allowed as a user to make mistakes. Uh, when you write uh, an envelope, there is no uh, client-side uh, validation for user experience. So you are allowed to make mistakes when you write uh, the address of the person to whom you want to, to send the letter. And if you do that, uh, the post will send back the letter to you. Uh, if you add your own address as the address of the person to, who, who sent the letter in the first place, the post will send the letter back to you. So, if you decide to write an address that doesn't exist at all uh, on the envelope, uh, the post will try to send the letter to this address, but as it doesn't exist, it will send back the letter to the address uh, of the person, uh, the, the address you wrote of the person who uh, who would have sent the letter. But in this address, you, you you put the address of the person to whom you really wanted to send the letter. And so the post will send back the letter to them, and they will get back the the, the letter, and it's free. So uh, of course it's uh, it works uh, uh, more or less because uh, as its side effects, there are lots of chances that the letter is lost uh, uh, in the process, and it takes much more time. Uh, so today anyway, we don't have to to use it. Uh, so. Uh, I don't recommend exploiting it, of course, but it works. Um, and so security is uh, uh, can be fun because uh, you can use it to exploit things in your everyday life. Um, the second thing is sometimes vulnerabilities can be uh, a bit hard to grasp. And uh, so um, the first time uh, I've tried and explained uh, how uh, insecure deserialization works uh, with theory and uh, uh, theoretical concepts. Uh, uh, I had a, a hard time. And another thing I uh, struggled with is uh, how to uh, make uh, a low list. So we know that uh, denial lists uh, can be flowed, but sometimes a low list are very difficult to build because there are lots and lots of things uh, that you want that you would want to add uh, in your other list. And there is uh, one uh, story that, uh, uh, one flow uh, that happened uh, that helped me explain both of, of these concepts. So it's a spring for shell. Uh, well, I've put uh, an example that can be discussed better. Um, it's a vulnerability in which with insecure deserialization in the spring framework, uh, you would be able to uh, uh, have a remote code execution. And so it's a vulnerability uh, that was fixed and that was uh, that was uh, that uh, finally worked again. So um, how it works, it uses uh, it leverages a feature of spring uh, which is uh, data binding. So uh, in a form, for example, you will uh, add the, the key or the, the, the attributes or the properties of the object uh, you want to handle uh, on the server side. And uh, Spring will do the mapping uh, for you and will uh, transform these properties into the actual object. Um, and one thing is because of the, of the, how, uh, of the inheritance, all of the Java set objects who inherited from the object uh, object uh, class have access to an attribute, uh, which is uh, the class attribute. And so, if in your form you add this uh, uh, class uh, uh, attribute, you would be able to manipulate uh, those properties. And what's more, uh, in those uh, 
class attributes, you can access another uh, attribute, which is class loader, uh, which helps you uh, handle uh, how class classes are dynamically loaded. And uh, the second line, it's something specific to Apache Tomcat um, that is used for logging purposes. And by using all of that, uh, so that's the form you would be able, so uh, about 15 years ago, that you would be able to uh, uh, use. And so you, you would be able to uh, add uh, a file on the web server that's called uh, shell.jsp. And in this file, it will look for query parameters uh, that are called uh, CMD, and it will execute them. And so it was fixed. Uh, about 15 years ago, it was fixed uh, by uh, this uh, piece of code, which looks uh, great, a priori. Um, so they look at all the properties that you have to map uh, to the object. And if it's a, a class loader, then they continue and they, uh, they ignore it. So you can't uh, use this property. And it worked for about 12 years. And 12 years later, um, some security researchers and hackers found out that uh, there was a way to bypass this fix. And in fact, it was a, a, a bypass that was uh, possible uh, from a, a long time ago, because Java 9, uh, the, the ninth version of Java, of Java uh, was just not uh, yet. It was out for many years. But in this version, there is a new thing that's called modules. And with the modules, uh, you have another way to uh, use class loader. So instead of only uh, having to do uh, uh, the class loader, you, you, you can uh, use a module.classloader, and it works exactly the same. And uh, the fix that prevented the, that prevented the use of a class loader is uh, bypassed. And so uh, they used a new fix. So uh, you can't uh, think of all of the ways the properties can be named uh, in the future, but you can decide that only a small subset of them can be deserialized. And so that's what they did, because uh, they not only uh, uh, decided to uh, ignore things that were class loader, but they only authorized things that ended with name. And so this way, uh, they were sure, more sure, sure, that in the next uh, few years uh, it wouldn't be bypassed. And uh, uh, moreover, they uh, tried to uh, infer from the, the class, uh, from the property, what object would be loaded. So, um, so that's a good way to uh, explain about the, 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 the deserialization, how it can affect an application in the real life. And uh, also have a better uh, mental model of how to do proper input validation because you don't have only to enumerate the items uh, in the list. You can also think of uh, how the, the items should uh, start or end with, uh, what types they would have, or use regexp uh, to enumerate them. So another thing uh, you can use stories for is uh, to have uh, to settle debates that you can have with uh, developers or other security experts. Um, and so one debate that I uh, had a lot uh, uh, in and outside of uh, my company is uh, so imagine you have the following XSS situation. So you have an attacker that uh, fills in a payload. The payload is stored on the server, and then later uh, it's uh, passed and executed on the browser's victim, on the victim's browser. Sorry. So where do you do uh, the encoding or the sanitization?
to prevent the XSS. So you could do it on the client side. You could do it uh, on the server side by uh, doing some uh, input validation or before uh, giving it back to the uh, browser or uh, when it's rendered. So directly in the browser just before outputting it. And a lot of time when, uh, uh, so in, in some books that I read, uh, they, they told that it's better to do that, uh, the closest, uh, possible or the thing you want to protect. And as XSS or attacks for the browser, because it's a, you inject the JavaScript, JavaScript is executed in the browser, you would have it would be better to do in the browser. But um, a lot of times, some uh, people I, I, I speak with tell me that we should do that uh, on the server side just before storing it in the database. And so, um, uh, many years ago in Evernote, uh, so an application to take uh, notes, um, it was possible to do an XSS. So, uh, in the notes, you can add some pictures, and the name of the picture uh, is not uh, encoded or sanitized. And so if you add uh, a script uh, for the, the, the name of the picture, you can escape the HTML, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the name, and the, the tag in the HTML, and add your, your JavaScript. And so you have... a uh, here, an alert uh, that's showed in the browser. And so, what they did is, uh, first, they patched the XSS uh, at the moment where the user creates the, the note or edits, uh, edits it. And so, um, what that means is, uh, even if the uh, users updated their application, the old notes that were in the database were still vulnerable. And you could still use them for uh, phishing, for example. And the attackers uh, uh, had the possibility to use the uh, desktop app and to downgrade it to um, the old version to create uh, the notes with the same way that they used to do before. And so with that, they didn't uh, have the validation, uh, uh, the, the encoding or the sanitization uh, in the app and uh, neither in the API. And so, users who had uh, upgraded the application were still vulnerable because hackers could uh, still create them uh, malicious notes. And so, uh, what they finally did is that uh, they encoded and sanitized in the browser just before uh, rendering the, the, the output. So, it was a, a bit more uh, elaborate uh, in the in the real. Uh, uh, in the case of Evernote, because uh, the application uh, was uh, uh, a Chromium browser that was uh, installed directly on the computer, and with that you had able you were able to access the API of the, the uh, computer itself. So it was uh, way worse than an XSS. And so um, that's what I told everyone uh, <laughs> to just do the encoding and the sanitization uh, in the browser at the end. But uh, it's not always the case. So uh, what I uh, often do is uh, I will uh, do uh, some go and sees uh, on the projects uh, where the developers work. So I will take uh, the uh, lead developer and perhaps some of the, of the developers of the team and we will go and see the code and we will try to find uh, some vulnerabilities and, uh, and find out uh, how they occurred. And so, uh, one, in one of the, those go and sees, I found out uh, that. So it's a, a React component uh, whose goal is to um, display some uh, JSON LD metadata. So it's a way to add uh, metadata that will be displayed in the search engine. So in Google, uh, you will have uh, some specific things uh, that will show uh, directly in the in the results page, and uh, so you can see that uh, there is a 
a way here to bypass the uh, encoding that React does by default. So here we have a, an XSS too. So um, and one of the thing is uh, so this component was used uh, many times in the applications, and the uh, the, the worst uh, place it was used is um, to display in the uh, results uh, in, in Google the comments in the the comments of the Google reviews uh, API. So if a user in Google Maps uh, added a review of the uh, of the the, the place uh, that was displayed on the page. Um, and added some uh, JavaScript in it, it would be executed uh, on the page of the application. And um, uh, and in fact, why the developers did that is because uh, they used the code from the framework documentation. So here it's an extract from uh, the uh, next uh, JS documentation, and they explained that to display JSON LD uh, dynamically in your the application. Uh, that's the way to do it. Um, and in fact, uh, the comments that come from the Google Maps API are encoded. So uh, if Google did not do that on the API side, the application would really be vulnerable. And so here it was not the case, but it's a bit of luck because uh, we cannot rely on Google uh, on Google Maps, so there is still need to sanitize and encode uh, on our end. But uh, it kind of uh, reframed us on uh, where we need to sanitize and encode uh, things. Then uh, we can use that to fight the optimism bias. So we tend to uh, overestimate uh, the likelihood of positive events and. That's what interests us in the security field. We tend to underestimate the likelihood of negative events and the likelihood of uh, uh, flows being exploited. And that's especially the case with uh, CV in uh, vulnerable dependencies because uh, we can have a lot of uh, alert fatigue uh, and uh, uh, many times uh, the alerts that we have are uh, uh, the, the, vulnerable, the vulnerabilities are not reachable because you could have a, a front-end vulnerability in a back-end dependency or you could have a, a, a SQL injection in a, in a dependency that's only used uh, for testing purposes and so those are never reachable in your application and so developers can uh, tend to uh, not fix them and sometimes it's not uh, a full positive. It's it's really uh, reachable. And so, uh, for example, uh, when you upload a file on an Apache Struts application, so uh, what it's uh, used under the hood is a uh, Jakarta the multi-port uh, parser. And at some time uh, there was a flow in it. And so, if you had a uh, uh, wrong value for the content type, uh, content type that does not exist, um, it would throw an error. And the, in this error, uh, you could have uh, some uh, open graph navigation language instructions that would be executed. And so, for example, uh, this is not a real content type. It's not uh, application HTML or JSON or whatever. So it will throw an error in uh, Jakarta. And uh, the open graph uh, instructions will be passed. And so in the response, you will have uh, the, the header. And so uh, it was uh, released uh, in early March of uh, uh, 2017. A patch was released uh, just a few days after. Um, and so you probably heard about the Equifax breach. So that occurred about uh, Two months after the flow was discovered, and they detected it uh, still two years, uh, two two months ag uh, later, and they announced it uh, 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 still, uh, still uh, two months uh, later. So, alert fatigue uh, 
is is not a reason not to patch your dependencies, and uh, you don't have in your you don't want to have uh, in your product the same uh, the same news that uh, occurred for Equifax. So um, does it really work? And are there some uh, uh, success that I, I can share? So um, what we do is uh, we leverage uh, that thing of storytelling by sending newsletters to all employees. So every three weeks. Uh, and uh, so one of them, it's so still the post. So um, uh, during one summer, uh, people started uh, receiving that in their real box uh, letters. So it's a notification, it's a delivery notification uh, that tells you that uh, you had uh, uh, something to, to fetch uh, at the post. And on that, there is a QR code and a link to, to visit to uh, confirm that you, you received uh, the letter. And so... Uh, if you have a look at uh, how it, at the, the, the URL, it seems okay because uh, the domain is lapost.fr, and if you have a look at the QR code before visiting the link, uh, it's still the same link. It's not a, a QR code uh, phishing attack. Um, if you have a look at uh, how the URL is built, uh, so it's URL encoded, and if you decode it. Uh, you see that, and so the, the the path is switch site, and the query parameter is a, a new URI, which is a, uh, which does not seem as safe as uh, lapos.fr. So the switch site uh, request URI parameter uh, makes us think to uh, an open redirect and uh, to uh, another website that's. Uh, not la post. And so you would end up on the pirate site with a fake login form, which is not on lapost.fr. And so uh, uh, you could uh, put your credentials in that. Uh, so a good example of uh, how open redirect uh, works. And so we send that newsletter uh, to uh, all of the, the people who subscribe to it. And uh, that's what we received uh, the morning after. Uh, it's uh, an email from uh, one of our developers who say that uh, they read the email and just the day uh, after they had fixed a vulner the same vulnerability in their product. So it was not uh, Lapost, it was another one, but uh, they fixed it uh, anyway. So um, One thing uh, to have made is uh, to be able to uh, uh, train and raise awareness about all of the kind of vulnerabilities, uh, secret injection, XSS, CSRF, uh, SSRF, uh, open redirects. You have a, a lot of stories to to, uh, to know, uh, to be able to, to tell them. And uh, there is a, a thing, a concept uh, in uh, that the journalists uh, know and use is the hierarchy of death or the kilometric death in French. So uh, it's the fact that uh, the more uh, closest, uh, the, the closer you are for uh, an event, and the less dead people there need to be uh, to interest people. So if you have a, a fire that occurs uh, in your neighborhood, it will interest you uh, more than if it occurs uh, at the other side of the world. And if uh, at the other side of the world there are thousands of dead of dead, dead people, it will uh, get your interest. So uh, that's why it's important to uh, uh, fetch your own uh, stories about your uh, own products and your own technical stacks. And uh, so uh, those are two, two small bonus stories that uh, uh, occurred to me. So when I, I first started... Uh, to get interested into uh, uh, application security, um, I had a mission. It, it was to help uh, all other developers to pass the security audits uh, right the first time. And so uh, we did a lot of training and a lot of uh, tooling to, to help them uh, achieve that. And I was quite proud because uh, 
on the last uh, on the, the last few audits, uh, it was uh, okay. So I went to the management and I said I, I told them, uh, okay, security is now solved. Uh, we won't ever have a security audit that, that fails. Uh, we can go to another subject. And literally the day after, we had a new audit uh, that uh, went with the, the worst note ever. Um, and so thanks to uh, this audit, so it's my personal story, but I will never forget the third way of executing JS uh, in the web page. So you have three main ways of executing JS in the web page. So you have uh, script tags. So uh, in the frameworks that we use, it's prevented by default. You can bypass that, but uh, uh, by default it's uh, prevented. So you have uh, handlers. So in a HTML tag, you can uh, had uh, add a handler, and if the user makes an interaction, clicks, or if there is an error, or if the tag uh, loads, uh, the JavaScript is, exec is executed. But there is a third way to add JS in an application, and I didn't think of it at the time, and that's because of this third way that we failed uh, the audit. So um, it's uh, if you have a link and the, the, the href of the link is not a real URL, but you use the, the, the pseudo protocol JavaScript, then when the user clicks on the link, uh, the JavaScript should be executed. So, uh, no, I know, I, I will never forget that. Um, and another thing is, uh, so I, I discuss with developers a lot, and uh, we were comparing frameworks. So uh, I had just... Uh, worked on a project that used uh, loopback, which is a, 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 a JavaScript server-side uh, framework. And uh, I was talking with a developer who uh, used the uh, API, plat API platform, which is a PHP, um, a PHP uh, a framework for APIs. And I was telling them that in loopback, uh, there is some uh, very frustrating features for security uh, people. It's you can create entities, uh, so new models, and each time you create an entity, all of the CRUD endpoints will be uh, generated by default. And as they are generated by the framework, uh, they are not behind any uh, mechanism of authentication of operation. So you, um, if you had if you had a user uh, entity in the, the framework, and you don't know that. You will have all the routes, the endpoints to create, read, uh, update, and delete the users that will be available publicly uh, to everyone. Um, and so uh, I told them that for sure uh, on API platform it should not be the case, and they think they thought about it a, a, about it a bit, and they told me that they were not sure that it was not also the case uh, on this framework. And so, I, I, as I had never used it, uh, I was not sure. So we uh, we digged it, uh, and we found out that it was also the case in uh, in, in this framework. And so, uh, we built a tool uh, which is open source that is that can be used for API platform projects that will uh, uh, plugs in the with the the, the water, uh, get all of the endpoints that are generated by the application, even those you didn't write. And it will check that there is at least uh, uh, one access control uh, to protect the endpoints. So, um, what we can take away from that? So, stories can help in many ways. It can help developers understand that their security is fun. Uh, it can help us and developers uh, understand and remember how some flows uh, work. Uh, and how to prevent them uh, efficiently. It can help settle debates, and uh, many years later, uh, go back to what you thought and re reframe you. Uh, it can help fight the optimism bias, because it, these, are not, these are not just uh, uh, rules and uh, requirements that are uh, decided by security people just to annoy the developers or to prove that we have a, a, a uh, well, it's things that uh, 
the security that we add in the application is to prevent flows that really happen in the real life to other people. Um, it can help make security a priority. So developers never have the time to, to fix things because they have the pressure of delivery. But uh, if they realize the impact of a vulnerability that they have in the application, uh, they will take the time to fix it. Uh, and it can help reveal developers' ingenuity because uh, by really understanding, understanding how a flow uh, was used uh, in a real use case, uh, they can think of tools and build uh, things in a way that, uh, as security experts, uh, we couldn't think of. So then you can find, uh, once you have those stories, you can find uh, mediums to share them, so newsletters, all homes, trainings. Um, and so uh, the, the newsletter that I told about, it's open to uh, all. So if you are interested in getting it, uh, you can comment on me because for now it's only in French. But uh, if there are enough people who are interested in it, uh, we would be interested in translating it. And uh, it's uh, so people like it a lot. And that's why uh, we decided to uh, uh, gather all of the newsletter in the book. So once again, for now it's French only, but. Uh, who knows uh, if there is some interest, or we could be uh, open to translate it. So come and, uh, and see me to, uh, if that's the case. So thank you uh, for your attention. If you have questions. Uh... Thank you, Paul. Uh, now we have um, 13 minutes for questions. Anyone? I have a question, uh, Paul. Um, do you think the the best um, um, way to share your stories is the newsletter, or you see other metrics like trainings? Uh, you are getting better responses. So I, I don't think there is uh, one uh, single way to to share the stories um, because there are trade offs. So the, the newsletter is great because uh, it has a lot of reachability. Uh, just by sending one email, we are able to tell the stories to uh, hundreds of people. Uh, but it won't have the same impact uh, than if you go and uh, talk directly to the people, uh, by, because everyone has a different uh, history and uh, uses different technologies and uh, have a different uh, understanding of how security works. So, cool. Thank you. And you? Uh, thank you for the interesting talk. Um, I appreciate that you're helping get the word out on security to your customers. Do you talk differently? Do you tell stories differently internally versus externally? Um, yes. Um, we uh, so in our company we all uh, um, we use a lot of uh, uh, lean practices. The, te the practices uh, that come from uh, Toyota. And so uh, there are uh, ways that we have uh, to uh, uh, solve problems. So we use uh, uh, something that's, uh, that comes from a, a Toyota engineer uh, who's named uh, Don Totsu. So it's a, a, a template for problem solving that's called a quick response quality control. And that helps us uh, being sure when we have a, a bug or a vulnerability to uh, analyze the root cause uh, of, uh, of this. And so by, uh, because everyone in the company knows about this uh, uh, framework to, to solve problems, um, that's something that they understand. And so we can use it uh, to uh, tell the stories in a way that they grasp better. And that's not something that everyone in the world uses. So uh, that's not something that I would use uh, externally. But internally, it can help us uh, uh, gain some time and have a better impact. Merci. Anyone else? OK. 
Okay, uh, I think we can just finish. Please give another round of applause to Paul.